certainly nothing cushy about driving an ambulance. Basically, the driver is expected to drive fast and accurately in all sorts of road and traffic conditions in a vehicle that has no better handling qualities than the average bread van. Because, of course, that is what the ambulance essentially is, a traditional commercial chassis with a special body on top. Now, the main argument for that is economic. It's argued it's far too costly to have a purpose-designed ambulance when the market is so small. The main implication is that the average patient gets no more comfortable a ride than the average loaf of bread. Of course, that's not strictly true. All sorts of things are done to improve the ride. The commonest one being to soften the springs. But as soon as you do that, then your handling goes. The whole thing rolls around like a barrel on the bends and pitches up and down as you brake and accelerate. So we end up with a typical half-hearted compromise. But watch this. Well, for an ambulance, that really is a quite remarkable ride. There really is virtually no trace of roll. Now, the reason is all in the suspension. This is one of just six prototype ambulances in the country fitted with a radically new active suspension system. And we can see it rather more clearly on this stripped down chassis. It's called active because unlike the conventional suspension, which absorbs bumps in the road and changes in load during cornering, this system senses those changes as they're occurring and positively responds in order to maintain the body's position. The wheels aren't mounted on conventional leaf springs, they're mounted on a combination of hydraulic strut and a gas spring. Back here we've got one gas spring to serve both wheels. At the front, there's one for each of the two front wheels. The key to the whole system is the master control unit. In fact, there are two master control units, one each side under the bonnet. Now, at one end, they're connected to the combined hydraulic gas springs on each wheel, and the whole system is maintained at around 1,000 PSI by an engine-driven pump. At the other end, they're connected by a simple mechanical linkage to the bottom wheel support, the bottom wishbone. And that's the device by which the whole system detects the relationship between the body and the wheel. So say, for example, the ambulance is cornering to the right, effectively that transfers load onto the left-hand side and tries to force the body down onto the left-hand wheel. The strut picks up the change, the linkage opens the valve, forces hydraulic fluid into the hydraulic strut, which raises the body up again. On the other side, exactly the reverse happens. As the body tries to lift in the turn, the strut opens the valve, allowing fluid out of the hydraulic strut, so the body sinks back down again and is kept at the chosen height. The same sort of thing happens whenever you brake heavily to stop pitching forward. In fact, whatever you do, the body stays virtually level. just designed for ambulances, it's aimed at a wide range of passenger carrying and cross-country vehicles, and it is very expensive, especially when fitted as a one-off modification. So are we ever likely to see it on family cars? Well, there are a number of prototypes already driving around with this system fitted, and several car makers have shown a great deal of interest. But as it stands, it's really hopelessly uneconomic. What it really needs to bring the cost down is for a manufacturer to fit this system on the production line. Meanwhile, however, an increasing number of hospital patients are getting an increasingly comfortable ride, which is perhaps as it should be.